find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg, and it is the awesome cast, the place where we get geeky talk, tech talk, social media, especially tonight from Pittsburgh, PA, uh, again, again, at Sorgatron on the Twitters, and uh, with me from Studio B is John Chichilla. Hi. How's it going? I, I created a name for you, and I forgot it already. Wheels will tell me in the chat room what that was. <laughs> Chilla Dog. Chilla Dog. That's it. I'm sure yeah, that's- I- Actually, in like I think middle school, people called me Chili Dog. I figured. Oh, they just went the full thing. Like they didn't. They weren't even like yeah. creative with. It. They're just like you are Chili Dog. Like not Chili mm-hmm. Dog, not a mix on your name. You're just like you are Chili Dog. That's that was me. Jeez, back Jeez. in the day, I've I've had bad ones too. But this is the yeah. Awesome Cast. You can find us at awesomecast.net. Uh, you can find links for the social media for the sharing and, and talking with us and all that kind of stuff and subscribing to us on the podcast uh, and the video format as well. And uh, and of course, please, you can join us here live. A little different this week, but uh, we're usually live at live.awesomecast.net around 6.30 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday. And uh, of course, you can also... Jeez, what else do I talk about? <laughs> oh, here it is. Um, I kind of give the short form, but that's okay. Uh, you can also please follow us, patreon.com slash um awesome cast uh, you can become our boss it's, it's a way to support the show and it'd be great if we get a lot of the guys uh, uh really kind of contributing there if you really are, are you'll know, dig what we're doing here uh so we don't have to do advertising and i uh, can be completely supported by you so let's get into it i had a lot i had an interesting evening chilla uh i saw i saw some tweets out there uh, I, on the twitters i saw you liking some tweets so that's the reason why this is so late uh, as our awesome thing of the week. I want to talk about Social Media Day, of course. But uh, big event. This is the second one, I think. Is that, uh, they have, well, the second one, second event they've had here in Pittsburgh. And I think I feel like M- Mashable started this thing of all, of all places. So you know, nothing more respectable than Mashable. Uh, but anyways... But no, it was a it's a it's a celebration of social media. Um, there are events being held all over the place, and uh, here in Pittsburgh they do things, uh, uh, you know, as Pittsburgh does. And uh, how do I get rid of the giant sign up picture at the top of my screen? Because damn it, <laughs> that has not helped what? me at all. <laughs> what sign up picture is that? Like the, the new to Twitter sign up at the top of my page. I can't show anything without logging in on here, and it's a it's it's not a computer to log in on. Anyways, oh, you thank might, you, you Twitter. Do it? Oh, I bet you can't even do it with an incognito tab. Happy I don't know. Happy Social Media Day, you mother. Uh, but anyways, but no, no, no. We had a lot of fun out there. Uh, you know, ran into everybody. Uh, what's up, Bobby Cherry, uh, Kim, and. Uh, uh, Doug and Ginny, hello. I got to hang out with them for for a few hours here, uh, but uh, they, they they tried doing a, a pretty a pretty cool thing where they were talking about being socially good. Uh, unfortunately, things kind of went a little weird, and they had to uh, a Tumblr, for instance, pulled out uh, apparently last week, and they got somebody from Pinterest actually talking with us from the Chicago office. Uh, first on that, I, I, you know, Pinterest is one of those things that it's been hard for us to wrap our heads around. I think uh, if you're not the demographic, I guess, and there was some pretty good notes about about that about Pinterest. Uh, Chilla, are you using Pinterest in any uh, capacity here? So I'm using Pinterest, but I'm using it in a very very odd way. Okay. Um, I have a strange addiction to infographics. <laughs> and I use I use actually infographics to find out a lot of information because the one interesting thing about infographics is people tend to annotate where they found their source of of information for their metrics. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the one thing that I go to all the time to Pinterest for is to search for people who posted their infographics. Um, I also find that people, sh- um, if you ever gone to slide, I think it's slide share. Yeah. Um, yeah. When people share their slide decks. Um, same thing. A lot of people put their slide decks on, on slide share, but then they post them on Pinterest. Um, so like I was saying about getting a lot of metrics from infographics, I, a lot of what I do is trying to figure out employee trends and, and demographics when it comes to mobile devices and things of that nature, um, VPN utilization, uh, whatnot. 
So that's the one thing that I can always go to Pinterest for. Um, now, Carla, on the other hand, is a heavy Pinterest user when it comes to um, gifts. She actually uses it for all of her gift lists. And she also uses it for all of her recipes. Mm-hmm. So she actually, like I use Pocket, she uses Pinterest. Right. And for me, it's kind of, uh, I've, I follow some really good kind of um, uh, comic book boards and, and some enlightening stuff and a little bit of technology. But mostly it's really kind of comic book pictures and video game pictures and stuff for me. Uh, and, and, and even for client-wise, uh, my, my philosophy has been just dump the stuff in there so people can find it if they're looking for mm-hmm. it, right? Like everything yeah. we do here, including this show... I go through the entire list of everything we've done in a week, all the pages, all the, all the websites that we have, uh, you know, Mayhem Show, Awesome Cast, Sorgatron Media, etc. And I just pin them all, just bulk pin them, put them in boards that make sense on my personal account. I, I haven't split up to brand stuff for my stuff. I do run one brand for uh, Seclair, my one client, and and mm-hmm. I think because it, it really seems to fit the demographic. Because the idea is, well, fifty five percent of Pinterest is women, right? That's why you see food and wedding planning and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so they were they were talking about that, and apparently there's two things that just got announced, but we'll get to those in a, in a moment. But a couple interesting things. One, um, there's six people in the Chicago office. Pinterest is still a startup. Are they still in beta? <laughs> yeah, they're not in a beta, but they're still, they're still a startup apparently, right? So, okay. Well, that's like, I was just kind of can make them fun on google because google every everything they do for like 10 years is a beta yeah and, but that's... Gmail, gmail came out of beta like i think like a year ago so, it feels like it doesn't <laughs> it? it but it's not too far off if, 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 if it's not right yeah is it's hangout still a beta uh I mean, I'm being if, it it, might, hangouts might still be a beta it feels like it sometimes doesn't it mm-hmm. well they did an update today so i think maybe that I'm, is I'm that what's happening they roll out the updates on Tuesday, which means it's the worst pod, first the worst day for us to do the podcasting stuff. So, all right. But anyways, um, and the other interesting thing is, um, it, it's not about who's seeing your pin. It's the the the, the, the interesting look was uh, Pinterest is the is is the social media about me. That's really funny considering some people's Twitter accounts, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, so, and also it's the most future facing of the social media, uh, uh, uh groups or whatever. What, and what, what made you say that? No, no, the, what the, made them one, say this that? is what they say, uh, because yeah. this is the one that they use that people use as we mentioned with wedding planning, et cetera, to plan for an event, plan for the future, plan to do something, organize something in their life, ideas. Things they want to buy. And, and that's why, actually, I forgot that that helpful tip. If you have a loved one, a spouse, say what, whatever, um, anyone that you want to buy a gift for and they're on Pinterest, go look at their pin board. Gives mm-hmm. you excellent insight into what they're looking for and what they want. Exactly, exactly. So so apparently they also um, unveiled a couple of things. To, well, one thing today and I think one more recently. Um, one is this idea. I think this is the, this is the one that – well, one is like the, the motion uh, – what do they call it? Motion pins? That's not right. That's not right. I'll have the name I, I, here in a moment. I didn't hear about that. I heard about – did they talk about purchasing at all today? They did talk about purchasing. I just picked – I just uh, – Woke up Siri. But no, the first, it, well, let's talk about uh, buyable pins is what they call it. It's going to be showing up in uh, in your iOS device. Now, I, I haven't looked into this deeply other than what they said. They say it, it can link to your, your purchasing uh, online e-commerce solution, I guess. And um, one moment. There we go. Uh, I forgot to turn on the backup. Uh, anyways, uh, but no, you can, you can, it'll connect to your online e-commerce solution. And so directly through a pin of your product that presumably you pinned on Pinterest or someone repinned or you can buy that thing. Right. So let's say, okay, I sell D I sell DVDs and digital downloads for professional wrestling and no, not the ideal demographic for this, but we'll get to that too. So I should put all of those on there with a buy button, presumably that goes through my system and we'll see when we set up the new indie wrestling us here in a few weeks, what I can connect to, is it something compatible? You know, what, what do I have? They mentioned Shopify for instance. So I might be mm-hmm. out of luck there, but, um, so you have that solution and it's just an easy purchase situation. And I think that's pretty, pretty interesting. And, and again, for people that have an object to sell, 
like that uh, that's pinnable, I think that's going to be killer. It used to be you could put something in there and show a price on something, and it just I think it just went to the page you buy something for the most part, right? Yeah, this is where I think they're getting some, some click-through revenue, and the other thing that they're able to do by doing this is on iOS. Mm-hmm. When you were talking about you, not only – so it, I, I can't remember who gives the, the, the numbers and the, the information, but how many carts are left abandoned, right? How many people put stuff in a cart and the purchase the, – the actual purchase of the product is what keeps you from from purchasing because you have to go put in your credit card. You have to go do this, that, or the other thing. That's why right, Amazon right. works so well. What Pinterest is doing is they're partnering – or they're tying in, at least I know on the Apple devices, I'm sure if, if they're not already doing it with Google, they're, they're, it's not far behind. Right. But you're going to be able to use your um, Apple Pay and you're going to be able to use Touch ID to authenticate and make the purchase. Right. So it, it's going to be that almost like that one click type purchase in Amazon that, that makes everyone want to buy stuff off of Amazon and gives probably lots of people buyer remorse but it, it will make that 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 click through and that payment and that purchase so much easier and the interesting thing is well we see a ton of stuff that's actually hosted on amazon then pinned to help drive more traffic and, and make the the process just as easy who knows I mean, what we, i don't know is or is apple getting a cut and will google get a cut Right, right, and maybe that's why we only see one plan, one one version of this so far. Uh, so so far, they're they're launching on uh, two platforms: Shopify, as well as I had the other one. Oh, damn it! Uh, Demandware is the other one, and of course, some launch partners including Nordstrom, Macy's, uh, Ethan Allen, Michaels. You know, stuff that makes sense for for what people are already pinning. I I, w- I would believe on Pinterest. So it's going to be. A- that, Go ahead. Do you think this will cut into like the Etsy type? people no well somebody brought up uh somebody was tweeting with me and, and brought up a good point of well that's great until your thing hit goes viral and you can't meet the demand and i was like well that's a great problem to have yeah <laughs> and also don't put your etsy thing on here that you're hand making just in case right but you kind of want to right i mean you got you, you want to put your thing everywhere so it gets found and bought so i think it would be interesting if they would have partnered with like indiegogo um or one of those types of companies um, where you could quickly buy stuff that's not even created yet. Cause yeah. like you're talking about what, it, if it goes viral and they can't meet demand, well, Indiegogo and, and those types of sites are what, well, there has to be a, an understanding, there has to be a, an understanding and be a, a reasonable expectation of refund. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think if yep. you do that, like, like, I mean, I, I, I think I have a reasonable expectation of refund. You know, uh, something happens, somebody buys a DVD, and it turns out, oh, we don't really have those in print anymore for whatever reason. You know, I'm mean, like, uh, you can pick an art or, or I'll refund you. You know, it, it, it sucks, but there, there's that. Uh, I think if you're uh, making your thing on Etsy, I don't know. This is not something that I'm into, so I, I don't know the, exactly how that goes. How does Etsy work to that? There has to be some kind of quantity to it, right? Whatever mechanism that does quantity, if you're using Shopify or something, you have to have an inventory. Even Square does inventory. So mm-hmm. if you have five of these things, Shopify or whatever has to be able to say, well, I have five of these things. Don't let me sell more than that. Right. And, but I think with like that whole Etsy theory and, and we, we actually did a lot for Christopher's birthday off mm-hmm. of Etsy. Um, a lot of it's meant to be. And, and a lot of the Etsy sellers will say right on there, this is handmade and the turnaround time is about a week because they're making them on and demand I, yeah because they're because they're making them impromptu like we actually got and it was it was well worth the i can't remember how much we paid but it was it was rather minimal christopher's um birthday invites for like christopher's one and it was like a cookie monster type thing and and whatnot and it was just to have someone that they had you could tell they pre-made a death and it could have been in in publisher for all i know Mm -hmm. but they pre-made these invites and dropped pictures into them and put all the information in there um but based on the fact that they already had the template and the layout done all we had to do was was like five bucks we we paid we paid five bucks to on etsy and we sent them a picture and and the next day we got back a, a a pdf a jpeg and a high quality tiff i think um 
for, for the invite and we had re, reprint rights. And so I just took it to Kinko's and said, Hey, I need 30 of these. But I think it's to your point. I think a lot of, I think a lot of people on Etsy need to, to update as they can make the product they're selling. But there's a lot of products on Etsy, I think, that can be quickly reproduced in, in a quick turnaround. And, and it's the whole idea of con concept of supply and demand, right? High demand means a higher price, especially when supply is limited. Exactly, exactly. Um, so from that, there was the other, uh, the, the, the other pins, well, again, per these are purchasable things. Um, so Pinterest apparently is, 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 thinks that their their users are not ready for video. Uh, their argument is people think video is obtrusive and and, and ugly, and, and people just don't want it yet. Uh, Facebook and Twitter completely disagree. I just want to point that out. Okay, and we uh, you talk some check out some recent basic ergonomics. We actually just talked about this this morning. I talked about a recent TechCrunch article about the Facebook video uh, that Amber Mac was sharing yesterday. Uh, really, really, really interesting stuff. But anyways, that's for that. That's a whole other discussion. Uh, so the idea is um, think an animated GIF. But remember we we talked about Moji mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago, it, where you turn your phone or roll, roll your mouse over. Uh, the picture it looked kind of like Pinterest, but it turned into a bit of an animation. So think you scroll down the page, and this animation happens. Like from like the the, the I, I'm trying not to get into animation flash terms, but I'm trying to go from like frame, frame zero to something. But really, like from the first frame to the last frame, and and it, and it displays as you scroll down. You start scrolling, it stops animating. Like it goes with that. It's like you're turning a thing that has that 3D vision going on, like on a you know a, DV, a fancy DVD cover or something. It's a poor, poor explanation of that, I know. Uh, but again, it, it's something eye-catching that's going to stick out of things that generally don't move on Pinterest. Like, even animated GIFs, I don't think move until you prompt them. Uh, but it's a purchasable thing. It seems like something comparable to uh, our carousels on Instagram that are popping up lately. Uh, I had a really interesting talk about carousels on Facebook with somebody tonight, actually. And... Um, and uh, it, it, I don't know, this is, it's interesting to see Pinterest, what Pinterest is looking to do to monetize. And, and I don't know if you guys know, I've been, I've been on this, this tip for a few months now. Uh, Pinterest stats are amazing. Dive into those if you have a chance. I, if you have Pinterest, you know, even you, Chilla, I, I don't know how much stuff you actually pin new, but even the stuff that you repin to see what is reacting, I guess. So I, I know you're not really selling anything, but um, but still, is it easy to get those metrics? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you just go to analytics.pinterest.com. I got the yeah analytics analytics.pinterest.com. Logged in under your account, and you'll get them. And I'll I'll try to bring them up here. Actually, I don't. I have to log in, so I'm not sure if I can stand. Oh, actually, no. Hey, it should be over here. Here, you'll get a, you've got a readout like this, and um, you have your like daily impressions. Like I'm getting 620 daily impressions. Are you kidding me? Like, I had no idea I'm getting that kind of response on your email. It's impression, so it's whatever it is. It tells you what your audience is. It tells you what the, the biggest tweet is. Like, I know that the John Cena changes uh, wife of the show's, uh, you know, article that we posted is, is, is getting the most impressions and, and some clicks. Uh, generally, the stuff from, from uh, Insert Coin to Begin is populating here. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, it gives me an idea what, what is working on Pinterest. And, and now with this, I'm kind of looking at getting into this and maybe um, you know, opening up specific Pinterest pages for Sorgatron Media, for instance, maybe maybe not for Wrestling Mayhem show, but maybe for like Indie Mayhem when we're we're talking about the wrestling DVDs. You know, a little more. You know, what we're we're making content, we're making we're putting information out there. You talk about infographics, for instance. We're making videos about social media around here, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how. What, I, I haven't seen a giant growth in that. Uh, but I'm also seeing, you know, my, my client that has a lot of, uh, we have a nutritional nugget of a week, of the week, for instance. Those do really, really well there. And we have other little mindful educational pieces as well. And, and we're trying to share those out there. Uh, you know, I, I've had a lot of enlightenment about Pinterest and organization and what you can do for people. Um, so so follow me on Pinterest and see what happens, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but they're there. But the 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 guys are there. I'm seeing WWE stuff on here. I'm seeing interactions going on there uh, to a certain extent, right? And nothing crazy. But the video game stuff is there. Go look up cosplayers on on Pinterest. Ton of stuff. 
I, I, it gives me like that. Usually, if I'm sharing something visual over the Pinterest, that's not something I made. I probably got it from Pinterest. So, and she was actually genuinely surprised how many people had Pinterest pages when they raised their hands, or how many guys oh, really? had, had Pinterest pages. I think, I think in that crowd, I think if you're talking to the social media crowd, we all have Pinterest pages because we're all trying to figure out how freak we're going to use this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think well, I think I was a little bit of a skew, but still uh, there was a, there was a, I didn't get the entire statement, but she said that's the, the Pinterest has more men on it than the combination of GQ and like two other magazines combined have readers. Oh, I'm, I'm sure because I mean, it, well, first of all, it's free. Yeah. And second of all, it's. The, and, and this is where I keep going with people that are that are heavy paper users whether it be you know print out the print out the powerpoint print out the whatever you're reading there there's no index and there's no search capability on a piece of paper right if you handed me a stack of paper and said count the time count how many times the word the appears in this it's going to take you quite some time to skim, skim through and probably not get it correct whereas word can quickly count how many times the word the appears across the next 50 pages of document so i i think this is where Pinterest definitely serves its purpose. If I want to look for a, a, a black suit or a blue tie, searching those searching that is going to quickly result me in, 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 in all of the types of clothing that I'm looking for. Much like Google Photos that it is working on too, right? Combine the two of those and then you got quite, quite the, the picture indexing search engine. Mm -hmm. so, so I can definitely see why a lot of males would want to be on there. I, I think I, 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 and I think I want to get more deep into some Pinterest ideas and everything too. Um, but uh, uh, as we get into basic sorgonomics, I kind of want to move on here because we're already kind of running late. But I, I do want to mention and this. I think I'll also dive, dive in a little deeper too. Um, a lot of local Pittsburgh representation. You know, again, Pinterest itself didn't really fit the theme, but I think I don't know if it was part of the last minuteness of of, of the selection. Uh, but they have I think nine people presenting under ten minutes. So, something like that, um, including uh, you know somebody representing the the Pittsburgh Marathon, and I know there's some people out there that listen that that are involved in this. And I'd love to hear their take on this as well. How they went from no social media on that weekend and everything was crazy to they they set up a social media command center basically that will just handle everybody talking about anything and requesting anything. Um, and 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 it, they said they hit 10 percent of all the people that come to the marathon. But that is a significant 10%. And then you've got to think how many people actually have, have phones on social media that are just runners, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. That was interesting. A uh, friend of Sorgatron Media in PodCamp Pittsburgh, Ginny uh, Pick Girl, was there uh, talking about Make Room for Kids and how, how she raises $10,000 every year for this and 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 you know the xboxes for kids at the children's hospital and everything and, and how great that is uh, it, this is an interesting thing it is getting harder for her to raise that money every year for instance what happened during the during her fundraiser this year that stupid blue dress <laughs> so everybody was talking about that nobody <laughs> wanted to talk about raising money for kids mm -hmm. that I, is a problem I, 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 how do you even plan for that? Exactly. I, well, I mean, I'm 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 wrapping my head around. We we have the unfortunate scheduling of Chachi plays is the week before pod camp. So I'm sitting there mm -hmm. trying to like schedule and say who do we talk to? Who do we talk to about this thing? Where does this go? And then realizing how all the people I want to talk to about Chachi plays, I want to talk to about pod camp, and I can't focus right. And and you know to, to be somebody that that's a topical blogger like this, saying hey everybody let's do this thing, and you depend on everybody else sharing it, and they just want to talk about a stupid blue dress that took over for the week, you know. <laughs> well, I feel bad for anybody trying to do anything significant on social media last week when we had the flag issue and the uh, Supreme Court issue, for instance. Mm -hmm. Good luck. I, Good luck. That's where I think I, I think if if. Yeah, there's going to be some people that that are definitely going to find their way to it, but but to your point, yeah, you know, it's almost like you have to hashtag the wrong thing just to get someone to see it. Exactly, with the, with the you got to start fooling with people, right? Yeah, and, and look at like Facebook. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Obviously, they they did a brilliant move with the, with the rainbow filter because there were points in time where my entire timeline was just people posting pictures selfies of themselves with the rainbow filter on and that, I, that I, the, just, the common comment last yeah. week was it looked like my facebook wait my facebook got attacked by skittles um yeah. so 
That was awesome. That, that was some great stuff. I didn't know it was an actual just filter to do that. I thought, I'm like, how is so many people that I know have no Photoshop skills getting these rainbow pictures? But there you yeah, go. And the, the, yeah, Facebook put a, put a automatic filter that's cool. if you wanted to use it. So It's like an auto awesome or something, mm-hmm. you know? That's, that's, that's cool. Um, from there, uh, Brazen Kitchen, uh, I forget, her, Le- Leanna, I want to say her name is. Uh, I saw her talk at t- uh, TEDx last year. 412 Food Rescue. They're Uberizing food for the hungry. So any place where there's like leftover food that they're, they're like, I guess the stuff they're going to throw out for the day, uh, they have this truck that goes around and you tweet at them. They just use social media to start with and it gathers up all the food, takes it to a shelter. Oh, that's and that's brilliant. And they're I mean, trying. So, so many places that I hope, I hope they get their name out there and I hope a lot of places mm-hmm. actually help with it, help with that because there's a lot of places I've worked with that had a lot of leftovers that, that unfortunately. Well, I, I actually have. Uh, thankfully, I got the stats on this picture here. So uh, in the first three months, their volunteers rescued 40,000 pounds of food, almost $100,000 worth, giving 30,000 meals uh, to the hungry, saving 30,000 pounds of CO2 from entering the atmosphere because less cars, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, carrying all this stuff around. Clothed almost 15,000 pounds of charcoal burn. Uh, enough used uh, by two houses for an entire year. And they're trying to make this go, well, why can't we do this nationwide? And they're 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 creating a platform right now. Um, at 412 Food Rescue, if you want to follow uh, what that is, check it out, ask any questions, see how you can help. Go do that. Um, another great story, uh, uh, The Motherhood uh, talked about how uh, she had a blog and she had like 200 people daily, so nothing huge, right? Uh, but she's but everybody after Hurricane Katrina had all of these items, but she had no way to get it to them. And uh, she connected with some people through social media and, and, and got that worked out. Now they have the motherhood and and, and awesome stuff there uh, at the motherhood on Twitter. Cooper Monroe as well. Uh, we had another one thread. Uh, we talked about thread before. They're going out and um, um, uh, get, recycling and turning it into clothing and giving jobs to people. And like, I think Haiti is where they target. Uh, specifically uh, great story uh, tedx grandview avenue uh go look up thread and um ian ian rosenberg i think is the fellow's name that's on there um and and and, and check out that sort of really great story about him and the guy that's down there um geez uh, uh mad mex was there big burrito <laughs> And okay. I don't know how that booking happened because he's like, I don't know why I'm here, but I got this story. And he talked about how there's jokes in the Mad Max uh, 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 menu, and um, mm-hmm. which ended up with uh, something about uh, 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 Caitlyn Jenner. Is that the proper name now? I, I, I don't follow I so. the story completely. Yeah. Um, that really did not settle well and how he had to respond to it. And that was like it. So it got a few laughs. Uh, Next Pittsburgh. If you don't follow nextpittsburgh.com, um, I didn't even know their their goal was social good. I just enjoyed their articles about Pittsburgh, to be completely honest, <laughs> because they do I, focus. There's a lot of tech stories that we share out of there, for instance. Uh, but there's just generally good things in Pittsburgh that they're doing. It's a it's a good news site, like our old good news show we used to do for the nonprofits. Uh, so please follow them. And uh, the poor guy from Pittsburgh 311, <laughs> who I know I've interacted with at a time or two here. Uh, basically, if you have any questions, if you're living in the city of Pittsburgh and you're like, what happens when this happens like i my parking issues as me on my social media are aware of i'm like who do i talk to about this stuff and then you should talk to these guys and they were great about it unfortunately the person i talked to uh, could not help me and was very pleasant about it thankfully uh but anyways that's out of anybody's hands uh but but you know something really good and unfortunately i couldn't stick around i had to i had a book so we could do the show allies for children um just go allies number four children uh to check out what they're doing there look it sounded like they were doing some stuff with adoption uh, for instance, so please, please check it out, support them. I apologize for not making that. So really good. I, I love that they do this event. It was free, a nice gathering of people in the social media community. And um, and 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 there's if you're in a especially a big city, uh, go look up Social Media Day. Uh, I saw that there were events happening all over the country. Um, they just these ones, you know, here in Pittsburgh, they wanted to do a theme, and and I think it was really cool. You know, a nice celebration of so, social media, and and uh, I, I think it's really important these days. So, um, yeah, I, I say I'll probably talk about some of these items uh, and parse them a little bit here as we go here in the next few days on basic sorgonomics. I think so. Chilla, 
you got an awesome thing. I kind of, I kind of went long winded on that. No, that's that's all good. I mean, it's a lot of information. It's all, it's a whole day of social media. It is. Packed and you like just two covered hours. it in like twenty five minutes. Sure, sure. So uh, my awesome thing of the week, and I didn't even, I just noticed that you posted this on Google Plus as well. Hmm. Um, so one of the things Google does is obviously they have to test lag on their OS and on devices. Yeah. Um, so th- this is a pretty cool. Obviously, this isn't something you're going to put in your house or, or you're probably going to have access oh, to. You have a video um, on your article. Yeah, it comes out of a, it was built by a Finnish vendor, Opto Fidelity, um, but it measures end to end latency. Of, of Android and Chrome OS devices. Um, it's a little robot that, that taps on the screen and, and checks out and, and gauges responsiveness of the display, which is extremely important, especially for software developers as they're developing de- developing apps or websites or whatnot, um, <clears throat> which got me actually, oh, I got to pause this because it's really loud. Um, um, there, there's actually a, there are a couple companies out there that you can leverage the same type of technology. Um, to me, this is really cool, but I don't know if people are going to have space for this or even be able to afford it. Um, there is actually a company out there. Um, one of them's Perfecto Mobile that actually has the same type of thing in a cloud hosted solution. Hmm. Um, I don't want to make this a sales pitch for their product, but their product's pretty cool, right? Um, they actually, one of their sites is in Boston, and they have a warehouse just full of physical real devices on various networks um, using various operating systems. Um, usually they have the devices the day after they come out. They have BlackBerry, Windows, um, Android, iOS, what, pretty much what you're looking for it, they have it. Um, this is companies like Lego, Virgin Mobile, Verizon, Reuters, um, use these technologies, but it, it allows you to remote in and you can test the same type of thing. Um, it's actually a physical device plugged into a unit that, that you can actually use to test the responsiveness of, of your website or your app that you're developing. Um, they actually have the, and I'm sure this, the, the, the Google um, and the finished product do as well, where you can actually automate your test load and do regression testing. They'll, they'll do screen OCR, um, to actually look to make sure that something's coming up or that an error message didn't pop up. Um, to me, the, this ability, whether it be what Google's using or, or something like this Perfecto Mobile, um, the ability to load test, test latency, everything is, is becoming more and more important, especially as more and more um, people are trying to develop full-fledged apps and, and millions and millions of people are downloading it. Um, I mean, think about Facebook or, or any of those companies that, that are deploying their app across so many devices, so many different screen sizes, um, testing across so many different carrier networks, uh, different Wi-Fi networks. Um, to me, this is the type of technology that I think more people need to leverage, um, especially when you see if you've ever downloaded an app and just have a poor experience, um, it's technologies like this that can that can make the difference and make the app actually better over time. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's su- super big. I'm, I'm sure this is something that a lot of people we talked to from uh, Alpha Lab dealing with application development would want to deal with. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly. So, all right. We also have uh, an interesting uh, selection. Not an awesome thing of the week, but our friend Matt Weller at Nero on the Twitter. Uh, usually you can hit me up on Google+. Plus. It says, have you seen this? I really like the idea of wearables that don't look like plastic ri- wristbands. And it's Bella Beat, for instance. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sorry, is the, is the uh, name of it. Smart jewelry, they're calling it. And if you look at it, it's the world's smartest piece of jewelry, they're saying. And uh, if you look at it, it's just a little metal leaf that would, like, clip on your blouse, for instance. This is for women. Let's be clear. This is for women. A little lapel piece, a little something like that. You know, I, I think it kind of a, a, akin to uh, one of the Fitbits that just, like, you know, clips on that that i have some friends that have that but they keep forgetting to clip it on in important times right um so but it take it it it, it, this is what the apple watch is kind of promising isn't it like we want to have something 
we want to have something that looks decent. Doesn't look like a big plastic. What the heck is that? Like this Pebble Watch, for instance, right? Which I mean, that's the Pebble Watch is a 1.0 that worked, okay? Uh, and, and they even have other versions that look better, right? With steel and, and lighter versions. But this is legitimately like you would not mistake this thing for a device. Again, it just looks like a, a pin and it Bluetooth in, and it gives you whatever sleep and you know how long you've been awake for um you're 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 you know you're running you can wear it as a necklace for didn't we have something like this uh in kickstarter that it, it didn't look as nice as this leaf thing that's going on but uh but it was something that you know if, if they got to a certain point like they would have like you said by request i think it was one thing you brought up by request later that you know they were like oh yeah we'll we'll make something to wear it on your wrist and that wasn't even one of the initial things. Mm -hmm. So this is actually pretty slick looking. The interesting thing is, and it's hard to tell in some of the pictures mm -hmm. that 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 wooden back piece to it is on it all the time. Right. Right. Um, but I'll tell you what. Uh, I mean, I would think about purchasing this for for people I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are very lady specific things that this thing can do. I won't get into that. Mm -hmm. You can check out bellabeat.com if you'd like to, uh, for instance. But uh, but no, it looks pretty slick. And I think this is the kind of thing, maybe there'll be dude versions of this or something coming out too. But um, but but it is. It, it, the, the idea to target the jewelry market is really going to, I think, make this stuff flourish. And I think this is a really good uh, thing. Thanks, Nero. Thanks, Matt Weller, for uh, sharing that with us over on the Google+. Plus. You guys can share whatever you'd like. Over on our social media, we read all the things we consider for talking on the show, and, uh, and and thank you, thank you so much for that. So with that, um, with that, what do we do now? Oh, we talk about pizza. Our friends over pizza. at Slice on Broadway, some Pittsburgh pepperoni pizza for podcast support for that ass. Sorry. Um, <laughs> go check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com. They're up here right along the tracks in Beachview area of, uh, of of the Pittsburgh area. They're also on the Main Street down in Carnegie, PA. Uh, great stuff from scratch. Been supporting us for a while. Let them know that you heard about them on the awesome cast on their social media. PGH underscore. I'm sorry, Slice underscore PGH on the Twitter or Slice on Broadway on your Facebook or Instagrams. And uh, say, tell them the awesome cast sent you. And with that, hey, hey, Chilla, we have a new segment that I didn't tell you we about. Do? It's not in the notes. We'll see if I can do this every week. But this is what you guys missed last week on the Sorger. He's going to join network. me on camera A. Uh, Your mind will be blown. He's so. coming over here. We got the MacBook. We're going to try not to drop it. So so it feels like I'm pushing a button. Now push down even harder. We had a good time with uh, with Mr. Seaback. Chase rats around in a corner. He'd point out and he'd uh, give the Latin Latin time for the rats. I learned that the uh, the race for father of the year <laughs> is as wide open as ever. Uh, you know, Kevin Owens, sure. King Carino, sure. Papa Frisco, Papa Lethal. <laughs> I mean, the quality parenting going on in professional wrestling these days. Oh, oh I've never had 30 a game crash second. on me before. Jeez. It deleted the game, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Before. That's a problem. Yeah. That's a little bit of a problem. Yeah. I've had an Xbox freeze, but I didn't have an Xbox to then recursively destroy everything on the hard drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's try, let's try and see a Rocks and Mandarin on Kevin Owens. That, that, uh, that was pretty messed up. That like John Cena like turned into a porn heel in the middle of his uh, promo. Just uh, <laughs> where did he become law resistance? What's happening? <laughs> oh my! You know, if you don't reach out, it's it's not cool to be the wallflower talking to the people you're comfortable with i talked about earlier on wrestling mayhem show about hey this is the guy that i run into at all the networking events and at least like ah other tall guy that knows wrestling i'm gonna go talk to him first and we'll see what happens from there inside the box we have uh, our own software that and, 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 and circuitry that makes it possible to take input from all sorts of devices whether it's joysticks like the flight joystick we had just there for a demo a uh, wheelchair joystick that you'd use for a powered wheelchair are you aware and and have you seen or experienced the uh jimmy wang yang's redneck party bus that i hear so much about i i am and there's also a princess bus um i mean i haven't partied on the party bus okay. myself <laughs> 
Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Gameathon for Youth Arts Programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium or join us live. ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference too and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B-A, B-A, start. Man, Chilla, we had a great week last week, didn't we? We did. It was awesome. Yeah, there was a, there was the time you almost climbed in my lap with your laptop to show it on camera, for instance. I, I wanted you to th- I wanted you to touch my force touch. That, uh, wow. Okay, <laughs> there, we went there. Um, yes, I. I well, you know, we're making those, and I've talked about. You know, we're on Clamor. We're on Instagram. Well, at least I'm putting the stuff through our Instagram. We're on. You know, if you follow us on Awesome Cast on Twitter, we put the, the video clips up of the shows that we've been doing. And uh, I'm like, well, this is sitting here. I love the idea of like what you missed last week that Twit does. Well, let's just do this. Um, kind of cross pollinate. What up? Maybe you only listen to this show. Maybe you only listen to Wrestling Mayhem show. Something else. Uh, let's like, hey, here's all the here's the other stuff that we do. You know, because maybe people are like, ah, I'm not I'm not going to dig a tech show. Who knows? You know, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a nice little thing. And, and there's so much uh, interesting stuff as as you just heard, like a redneck party bus driven by an asian man who happened to be a pro wrestler with the wwe that's the thing that happened are you gonna do the same thing on your other shows to help cross pollinate we're going to try (laughs) very cool uh we're gonna do that yeah we're gonna do do what we can and 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 again you know just make sure listeners know what else is going on so with that uh i i honestly cannot remember where i got this from i i came across it on a site maybe a podcast somewhere but I, I wonder, you know, you're Mr. Uh, Mr. Wearable Device over there. Uh, but uh, the, this thing is called the Olio. And it's not out. It's it's kind of pre-release at this point. First batch of it is sold out, but you can sign up for more information. It is, uh, their whole thing is it's a, wa- it's a stylish watch first. Kind of uh, going off of the leaf argument. You know, it, it's something that looks like a watch. But then it also does this other stuff. And these notifications pop up around around the watch face and everything. I think, uh, and again, being not an Apple device, being not an Android device, I kind of wonder what the compatibility is going to be like, much like, you know, it's a little worrisome when it comes to Pebble uh, from time to time. But, and also because this is stylish first, this might be an $800 watch to begin with, guys. So this may not be for us that are just fine with our Pebble watches. Uh, But it looks slick. It's an interesting thing. We're going to have a lot of these things that we're going to find over that we'll never afford because we're just not watch people, for instance. Um, and I'm wondering, I think you can see the video over there, a little bit of this. It's uh, oleodevices.com. That's O-L-I-O devices.com if you want to check out more information on this. Uh, uh, Chilla, what do you think about uh, this form factor and kind of what they're presenting here so far? I, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, it looks looks super impressive, mm-hmm. um, it, but it does look pretty thick. So I wonder if they're trying to solve a battery problem or the time the, the time problem right through, through thickness because that device mm-hmm. looks as thick if not thicker than the Moto 360. And I feel like there was I feel like there was a pretty darn thick device. I feel like there was a mention of that too uh, in the video about about the time about it not not being just the day, for instance. Right now, the the one thing I will say is uh, their ad makes it look extremely extremely extravagant mm-hmm. like the, the whole the whole way they tied in a lot of the they used app screen captures for like whatsapp if you were if you were watching and, and you kind of paused it along the way um they're showing it almost as if they're trying to upplay the fact that, that their device is going to look as close to or or spot on with with a lot of the apps um, if they can pull that off, I, I think it'll be great. You can see that from what it looks like, their 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 clasp is modeled off of that one of the clasps that um, that Apple's using. Um, but I'll tell you what, the, the, that device looks the, the, the watch faces look stunning. You, you want one, um, right? I mean, it, 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 I, it's... I do. It, that does make me think. I hope. And, and and how how much is it going to take for Apple to take a lot of this, right? Right. Um, but it, it looks like a great device. And then to your point, what's the what is the price on that? Oh, uh, well, you know, I didn't hit the shop button, but it just said it's sold out. But um, yeah, they're not. 
I don't even see a price on this. Let me see if I view styles. They're not even listing it at this point. Oh, nope, yeah. nope. I found it. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no, this is uh, starting at $745. So and these are even these are the like leather and black and 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 you know the bang on your band and everything. Like, yeah. So yeah, we're definitely oh you got I didn't look even look into this stuff. Um, and, and it is both the iOS and Android uh, compatible. Whew. A lot about the. And it's so if you look at their watch face, they have a watch. They have watch faces that are called complications. Mm-hmm. Which is a I standard. <laughs> I, it'll be interesting. I, it'll be interesting to see. I don't see other companies having a problem mimicking what they're doing, mm-hmm. other than the actual look of the front face of the device. The other thing is, and you, I couldn't tell from the ad when you actually, if you stop right on that that section you're on, and you look at the watch face. Notice there's the flat part at the top that's mm-hmm. not the watch screen. Mm-hmm. There's your flat it's tire. It's actually the bezel. There's the flat spot that's at the bottom of, of a lot of the Android Wear watches. But it's not um, like it's not white on black, so it's not sticking out as much. Also, right. I, want, I want to point out, like, all these notifications look the same. There's nothing mm-hmm. very special happening here really um so i mean it, it, it's just it, it, okay they have some special stuff for navigation it looks different for music connected devices calls but other than that i mean it seems like it's a pretty standard they're accepting notifications just like your pebble watch does they're just making a better presentation in the physical watch itself and screen mm-hmm. so very interesting to look at and, and we're gonna have a lot of you know i, I always I always thought it was funny because the tech news was always i read the blogs i watched the listened to watch the podcast watch the tv and it was always the conversation when i was in my day um was remember it was cpus how to build a computer clock speeds all that kind of stuff graphic cards putting that in the thing to the point where we talk about phones and almost phones exclusively these days because that's how we're computing like again almost exclusively in some of our cases and now we're going to be talking about these things in our wrists like that's where we're at And, and i think that's been an interesting thing if i was doing this podcast 15 years ago we would be talking about my ibm Pentium 166 and how cool that is and whatever news is coming out, and the, and how MMX is the technology that's going to change multimedia forever. And MMX was it MMX? Oh, that's that's going to bother me. It they, was a multimedia thing, yeah. Yeah, sure I think it was, it was, it was MMX. It was uh, the the uh, a Pentium 200 with MMX. That was the instruction set they added on. Um, but there was some some hub hubbub about uh, uh, those instructions being used in the AMD K62s. Um, but then they also had their own thing called 3D Now, which assisted the 3D capabilities in the CPU, not the GPU. So it kind of paired with your 3D FX. And hope you have games that work with 3D FX. We should have a classic. Uh, tech cast that would there, there there'd be we should film an extra one for like a throwback thursday <laughs> awesome cast throwback thursday let's make it happen <laughs> holy crap like like like, okay. like like let's like like we could do that okay now we're now we're brainstorming in the middle of the show this is dangerous but uh we could do that and be like hey man remember remember the cp i don't know how many of these we could do but we could pick a year and be like okay this is the year do you remember when our CPUs were slots in the Pentium 2 era? And we <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I still have some of those lying around. I got I got a 450 megahertz uh, AMD that I can't part with because it has a 3DFX card in it, and I just I just I just I think the cat's puked in it too, and I just can't break oh. it. Breaks my heart to to, to to get rid of it. So hold on one second, I'll be right back. All right, now I'm doing a solo show as uh, he's in Studio B. Maybe I'll orchestrate. What is he doing? He's he's left. Oh no! Oh no! He just brought. What is this giant box he just brought over to us? What so, uh, I we I I was narrating while you were doing whatever the hell you were doing. Was that? Did you? What is that? Oh so, geez, that's a that's a motherboard. So I actually took my first my my very first motherboard, and I'm getting really bad reflection off my yeah, screen here. Yeah. Um. But this is this is my first Gateway 2000. Wow. Three six thirty three DX. Um, I had the math coprocessor. I had 16 meg of RAM. 
and I actually threw in the Pentium 83 overdrive chip. Wow. Um, I wish I wish that I would, hadn't dropped this, but it actually I actually set it up and I'll have to fix this frame, but I actually set it up with LED lights so it, the, the whole frame lights up and the whole motherboard lights up. Um, but it's things like that that that, that Wow. That led us where we are today. It is. It, it entirely is. I had a very similar setup for my first uh, computer that was bought for drafting at home for my mother, because she was an auto. She's an AutoCAD and she still does AutoCAD to this day, actually. Um, so uh, yeah, that that was my that. I think that is solely between that and video games is why I'm into computers um, and, and everything that I do now is is that. But I digress. That's for trying that's for sure, trying to make sure the IRQs didn't conflict between your modem and your sound blaster card, and you had enough uh, mm -hmm. basic or what was the memory, <laughs> the lower memory, the, the six hundred. Um, but this is a story. Can. This is a story <laughs> for episode one of awesome uh, awesome tech history that will be uh, debuting very soon on the Sorgatron. I, dude, I see. I see Let's let's talk. I have some ideas. I have some ideas. Okay. Uh, I have some ideas on how to do this podcast without killing ourselves, uh, for instance. So uh, <laughs> we'll just have to take a Saturday and pound out two months at a time. Um, anyways, holy crap! Oh, there's news, right? What time is it? Oh wow, that's what time it is. Uh, we're at. Uh... Oh, I, I just got I just got thrown off because I forgot that we had a break in the middle there. Um, uh, Hulu as Showtime subscriptions as an option. This is cool. Did you look at this? I did not see that. As a cord cutter, and I now have the option to do the Showtime. That's great. Underneath Hulu, though? I'm already... Like, so, no, no, yeah, in addition to Hulu. So, so basically what happens is I'm already paying $7.99 for Hulu, and I just pay a fee on top of that. I think it's it ends up being like four, wow, like eight bucks more, something like that, and I have Showtime. And I can apparently cancel it at any time, and I have all the access. I don't, I don't get uh, the stream. I think I can. I don't know if that includes like access to the Showtime app as well, but I get all the Showtime content via Hulu. No, I think you do get access to the Showtime app. My link doesn't then, work, so I apologize you save, for that. You save two dollars. You save two dollars. Hey, you save two dollars. I, I I completely think like maybe I decide Ray Donovan is a show I want to watch, right? Um, I'll tell you what, there, this is one of those things where I'm I'm getting more and more interested in this and going back to cord cutting. Mm -hmm. But and the interesting thing is that I'm actually interested in actually picking up and t turning quickly turning on and turning off the services. Right. So I want I want HBO while Game of Thrones is on. Yeah, and then I want to shut it off, and I want Showtime while um, I can't remember what the name of the show is. I watch now. Um, I used to watch Californication all the time, and now I watch some of the other shows on Showtime. Uh, Dexter, so Dexter was really where Dexter was really big. Uh, yeah, I, I, this is one of those things where you can have a, easily have HBO without calling the cable company and getting into mm -hmm. a twenty minute dissertation on why you don't want something that you already have and you want something different. No, you don't want a free free one year trial and sign a two year contract and blah 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 blah. Um, <clears throat> which is actually how I got roped back into the cord. Um, and now I want to hang myself with it. But that being said, to be able to quickly jump on and off these services is what I think is going to make is going to, going to make them and, and what's going to make them a ton of money. Um, I, I have already heard of, uh, I think it was, is it HBO? If you sign up for a year of HBO um, a la carte, then you're going to get a discount. So, so obviously the, the networks are already starting to think about, Hey, if I can get someone on a one year contract, I'll give them a discount, but I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely interested in this. Maybe not Hulu per se, but mm -hmm. definitely the Showtime stuff. Exactly, exactly. Sorry, working show notes. Um, but <laughs> we're shorthanded tonight because of all the weirdness happening. Uh, some of our people helping out are in the air. Some people are on vacation. I'm getting. I've been getting texts. I've been getting texts from from Missy because she got bought the Wi-Fi in Southwest. So I'm getting texts of her play by play. She's already in Chicago, for instance. Uh, <laughs> and she tried watching the show. 
and sent me a screen cap. <laughs> I'm fuzzy, but apparently the audio came through fine. So there you go. You can watch Awesome Cast on a plane, at least on Southwest. Uh, Google Earth turns 10 yesterday. Do you, you still use it? It was first the, the first uh, G-Wiz uh, thing, I thought. It, it was cool. Mm-hmm. And I, I think a lot of it lent to maps. and Certainly. What we have now. Technologies moved back and forth. I, I heard they introduced two new things or something. They, they, they brought two things. I don't know what those two things are. Um, but I did hear for Google Earth turning 10, they added two new features or something. There's an Earth view and there's a something called Voyager. Uh, that they've added to this, apparently, according to this article uh, on a quick scan, for instance. So uh, there you go. Uh, it was, hey, go, go play with it. Go download or check out in the browser Google Earth. Uh, I think they still have apps for your iPhone and Android. Um, I mean, you know, we have 3D and everything like in Apple Maps, for instance, now. But this was the first one, and I think it's the one that still does it the best. So um, also, let's see. Will we see an Android BlackBerry? What's going on with this, Chilla? So so. BlackBerry came forward and did say they would be interested if they could sec- if they could create a secure implementation of Android. Um, they would actually be very interested in putting it on their devices. Um, and I'm, my internet is really slow on this machine right That's now. Okay. But, um, well, well, actually, I think the uh, I, I think the site is down that you have linked. Yeah. I just got a server error. Interesting. We'll see and they're, they're running on the same stuff as is um, they're using Cloudflare. Um, anyway, so this is, so, so like I said, Android or BlackBerry did come forward and say they'd be very interested in, in an implementation of Android on their devices where I think this is key. And I still hear about it from many, many users is nothing beats the battery life and the keyboard on a BlackBerry. Um, if they can pull this off, I would predict that BlackBerry could actually make a comeback I can see and, it. and be competing with the likes of of Samsung uh, on the Android platform, it, it certainly would level the playing field, wouldn't it? Because mm-hmm. then they don't have to worry about all that overhead of, of having a store, et cetera, et cetera. That's and, and Android and Android's open source, so I don't see why they can't create an <laughs> implementation. The, the trick I think for them is going to be getting the store, and not that I would never tell someone don't go get a Kindle. Um, especially when it comes to, to kids or if you're going to use it for the intents of a Kindle. If you're using it for anything for work um, and you think that, oh, well, it has the, the Amazon store and it, the fact that it lacks Google Play um, is, the, is the major reason why I would tell someone if you're going to use it for a Kindle and you want to play some Candy Crush, go for it. Um, if you're trying to use it, as, as an enterprise type device, you'll get a regular everyday Android, whether it be a Galaxy Tab or a Nexus Seven. Um, <clears throat> the the fact that the Kindle's missing the the Play Store is an issue. BlackBerry can run Android apps today. The fact that it's missing the Play Store is an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they can run full on Android and get the Play Store on there, um, I, I I think we we will see them well into the next 10 years all right we got one more topic here that we made a huge mistake and we're already running late and we decided to now talk about apple music uh but you have a very interesting nostalgic article here uh, about something specific happening with this Uh, both of us of course have installed this today right Mm -hmm. i was downloading before 11 a.m actually i actually couldn't download it until i think like i had a i had to do a lunch and learn like Mm -hmm. uh instructor led class uh Mm -hmm. from uh, 11 30 till about three o'clock today so i didn't get to download it until afterwards because i was actually using my phone as an as a teaching instrument but i did i did download it i have not enrolled in the the, beats the itself. three months free okay yeah. I, i'll give you i'll give you my thoughts I, i've been uh, uh uh playing with it here a little bit today but but what is this thing that you found so this is you can actually like days of old um, you can call a phone number. I don't know where area code 310 is. 310, probably um, California. <laughs> but there is a U.S. toll-free and a Canada toll-free um, number. You can actually call and request songs oh. to be played La- on the radio. Los Angeles County, by the way. <laughs> is that where it is? Yeah. Um, 
so I, I found this this humorous yet interesting. So we obviously Apple has spent a lot of time up playing the concept of yeah. of a human it's, human curated. It's music. So novel. It's so novel. <laughs> oh geez. Oh geez. Okay. So I installed this. Um. I, I updated, I enrolled in the three months, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I like it. I was actually listening to my own album on there. Um, so <laughs> if you want to check that monstrosity, you can look up crap. It doesn't matter. Have fun with that. Um, that's why we called it what we did. But uh, it's there, and I could listen to it, and I think I just paid myself by listening to it somehow. Thank you, Taylor Swift, for that. <laughs> I don't know if this is ten dollars worth, and I, and we'll see in three months if I have any difference. If maybe they'll roll out some stuff that I'm not into, or you know, or they roll out some stuff that'll get me more into it, makes it worth ten bucks a month. But um, the terrestrial radio or the the Beats One radio is funny to me. It feels like it's just a serious, um, uh, uh, and I'm Bluetoothing into my car, and it sounds great. It sounds absolutely tremendous. I don't get. It's not for everybody. And are they going to have more than one radio station? They kind of have to at some point, right? Because I one would think so. first I had a lot of electronica kind of music and a British lady yelling at me. And then it was uh, straight out of Brooklyn, apparently, in the afternoon for the drive home. And, and they're playing Wu-Tang Clan or something. And, and a lot of variety. I mean, it was not bad music. I liked it. But um, it's not something I think I don't pay serious. I have a, you know, I was kind of laughing as I'm getting my car to listen to Beats One. That I have a serious sticker on on the newer of our cars, and um, and we've never even considered turning it on. Never even a thought to turn we, on we satellite radio. We had a free radio. trial, and I just was like, eh, we had XM. I was like. Bit. For the amount of time we're in the car, it definitely wasn't worth it. Right, right. And, uh, um, now I've known somebody that I worked with previously that subscribed to Sirius, and he listened. That's what he listened to all day. Like that's just that was his streaming radio. That's before we had Pandora and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, jeez, I remember loading my computer at work with so much of my music. It's <laughs> like <laughs> so I could listen to it while I'm uh, while I, while I'm editing. Um, but anyways, uh, but but it's it's interesting. It, it does seem like they just layered this on top of what you already know and the already crowded music app in your in your phone i don't know why i expected a separate app for this so and, and i'm and, and the thing that peeves me off the same thing happened with google music in this past week where they went to the free model for all their stuff so it used to be i could go in and just listen to the stuff i uploaded to google music through that you know i put my stuff up in the locker and we're cool right now it all mm -hmm. mixes together um, I used to be able to, I have the last Macklemore album on my iPhone. It was always nice. I love the first three songs. That's my soundtrack to get hyped for something. And uh, I could say, uh, uh, hey, Siri, play Macklemore. It's going to wake up now. Watch. Um, oh, it didn't. And it'll play from the beginning of the album. I was like, cool. The behavior was there. It's exactly what I wanted, right? Now I say, play Macklemore, and it plays some track I've never heard of because it's popping into the iTunes music library. The Apple Music mm -hmm. Library, because all that's opened up. It's such a first world problem for me to be complaining about. But 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 it, again, I have to rethink that. And I got paid ten dollars a month to rethink that. And I don't know if that's worth it to me. Um, but this is the first time I've had absolute freedom to listen to any track I want on a service. Um, so I'm starting to get. Oh, that's why you guys pay for Spotify. For instance, there's a couple albums I hadn't gotten to because I didn't decide they were worth ten dollars. Doug Durda just started following me on Pinterest. Really funny since we both witnessed the Pinterest thing this after, this evening. Sorry. Um, so, so it's interesting. So I didn't realize that I thought Connect wasn't coming until iOS 9. Looks like that's now in the music app. Connect? Um, connect. We're, we're like, um, you're going to be able to connect um, with with the actual artists as part of the music app? Oh, no, yeah, it's in there. It's apparently in there. I didn't dive too much. I mean, I followed some of the artists I'm into. So I got my Twisted Tech Nine and Insane Clown Posse. I'm preparing for the gathering here at the end of the month, uh, or the end of next month, I guess, technically. I don't know. It depends on when you're hearing this. Uh, but, no, it's interesting. Also interesting, and here, I'll, I'll try to pull it up. We'll see if we're successful with this this week. Um, as we go in here, uh, so first, first thing that's interesting, tell us what you're into, and I can actually go in here. And I can uh, uh, double click on these guys, uh, like I double clicked on oldies and it pops up. I click once I, if I like classic rock a, a little bit more. 
You know, it, 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 you can actually set how much do I like certain genres and go in here, right? And you do that mm -hmm. through the entire thing. It's kind of a nice little interface. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then, uh, let's see, you got your new, so just new music popping up here. Okay, that's fine. I'm not really big into, you know, the newest and newest of new or anything like that. You have your radio. Real big at the top is that Beats 1, for instance. Uh, it's a little laggy here on, on the Wi-Fi. And you click that, but it's also got, again, it's just layered on top of everything that's already there. Because I already had a couple of radio stations I was playing with on the free iTunes radio. So this really kind of absorbed the iTunes radio that I could tell, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Connect is there. We'll see if we can pop in there, find more art, artists and curators. And it's already going through. Alabama, Alabama Shakes is somebody I downloaded off of uh, uh, I, uh, Starbucks' free downloads, for instance, right? <laughs> I have a lot of tracks in there because of stuff like that. Black Keys, the same thing. Uh, so let's say we go into Alabama Shakes. They have like they have a music video here. I can star, comment, share, uh, and, and go in. There's a little bit more about it. I mean, they, only, they don't have a whole lot here so far, so I don't know what exactly they're connecting with. I don't know. I guess who is it? Drake is that? Is that who uh, is is our biggest one? Uh, Apple Music. You can follow Apple Music Alternative, Apple Classic Rock, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters has some has something good in here, but it's really just like okay, they're in the studio recording, watching light. There's a picture there. Okay, that's cool. Live in Manchester. There's some pictures. I mean, it, I don't know. This is what a Twitter account's for to me. This is what a Facebook page is for. And then there's just my music. It is still is listed library playlists. You can also go in when you search for stuff. Like I search for, there's my music and Apple Music. So the distinction is there. So let's so, say. So, so here's where I what I want to see out of Connect, and this is something that interests me. And you're saying this is what Twitter's for. I want to know, or I want access to other musicians playlists you want to know what dave grohl is listening to yes i want i okay. want to discover music that he has discovered is that part of the promise i don't know but it's it's something that interests me that, that spotify upplayed for a while and then i don't feel like they followed through on it. and it was one of the things that that actually had me really interested Hold on, in let spotify. me see who let me see what tupac is listening to right <laughs> think about it Sarah McLaughlin, Nirvana. Yeah, it gets weird. It gets but weird. that's where, like, the whole, to me, the whole concept of connect is to give me behind the scenes content of mm -hmm. either recording studio cuts or um, live venues. Um, that you'll have to pay the for? Old, the whole concept <laughs> of the bootleg tape. Yeah. Um, I think that's where connect is going to make is going to bring people to the, to Apple music because I can get additional content that's potentially a exclusive to Apple and B the whole point of the, it makes me feel more connected. Right. That's the whole point. I, I'd be interested in, I, I would honestly be interested in Taylor Swift's personal playlist. What is she listening to? They're really big on pushing. They, they can tell I already bought an album because they're really pushing his 2009 album for Macklemore. I've never listened to or anything like that. There's some videos on here, so you can go in here and, and watch some other videos. They're 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 in here. You don't have to buy them like what came with uh, my thrift shop or, uh, uh, version, you know, for for Macklemore. Like, downloads on my phone. That was, that was gonna be my next question: Is are they the part of Apple Music where I get a segment of the library? Does that entitle me to the music video library? Uh, um, apparently it's in here. Uh, I, as far as Connect, I mean, I'm seeing a few. I don't know how much they have. Spotify is free, says Mad Mike. Yeah, Spotify is free with ads, and you don't get to select as many things. Mm -hmm. the, the what we're talking right, about so this is com so. we are comparing this directly to spotify the 999 version whatever that is that you get to select go through pick any songs that you want that that's in the library and have access to that this is not limited now i do wonder is there a what is the free version of this going to be because again i've been able to listen to itunes radio and it's just like pandora that i'll get an ad every once in a while playing whereas even even the free version of google music i don't know if they just haven't implemented this all i get is a picture on top of the cover art when i watch when i listen on my phone at least right i don't, I don't know experiential wise where else that is um so 
I don't, I don't want to get too much in. Or I'm only a few hours checking this out. Beats is interesting. I don't know. Again, it's DJs and funny accents uh, yelling at me, whether that be a Brooklyn accent or a London one. Interesting, but I just don't see. That's that can't be what I'm paying the ten bucks for. So, I don't know. otherwise, everything else is serviceable. It seems I haven't I haven't played with a station too too much. It seems repetitive a little bit when the stations I have tried, uh, which seems they have not changed anything outside of iTunes Radio that I've been able to tell. But I get it free for three months. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. See what grows on us. See if they improve it. Whatever the case may be. Let us know what you think. If you have the uh, 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 Beats, Apple Music, whatever it is, remember you guys are going to get it on uh, Windows and Android platforms, I think, uh, in, in, in soon. Maybe after the trial, I think they're going to do it. So um, I don't know what that's about. Maybe you guys will get a get a uh, get the pop in there for the trial then. So chill well, it. See where, where I see this definitely, and just real quick, and, and sure. then, then you, can, you can boot me off the, the hangout. Um, where I think this is going to make sense. You were talking about the nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. I think the price for the family share. Um, and that is the, killer. So yeah, I, I don't know if what, what you subscribe to and what Missy subscribes to. Um, the fact that you can use Apple Family Sharing across multiple accounts, right? Um, I think that's where this is going to right. make sense. Right, that is the killer app for that. Because if you're like, well, well, Susie's going to have her Spotify, so so that you know I don't have to listen to her Sarah McLaughlin playlist for. That's a really horrible example. Um, <laughs> For instance, or you know, we can't. You don't want to have to list, be subjected to Billy's and saying clown posse, you know, and and uh, uh, flocka well, waka. Like Google, you don't want to have to give up your Gmail account for someone else to share your account. Exactly, another huge problem for that. So, uh, <laughs> so we'll see what happens. So let us know what you think of the Apple Music. Chill, it's been fun. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> We're running late as hell. <laughs> Sorry, Mayhemers. We're going to be talking wrestling with this uh, very truncated podcast night. Uh, and I'm very curious to see how the video games, the video game guys, did tonight for boss battle without me, uh, over on a different service. So uh, a lot of stuff happening here still. Um, Chilla at Chilla on the Twitters. John Chilla on the Facebook. Stay social, people. Mm-hmm. You going to tell us what you think of Apple Music throughout the week here uh, on the Twitters? I think I'm going to. And I, my goal is, uh, you know, I'll probably get to play more with it on the weekend. I'm doing, I'm doing lunch and learns the next three days at work. So it's keeping me a little busy. No, you can still um, listen. No, that's all right. You can still listen but, completely, completely. But uh, <laughs> but but I'll definitely I I want to get more into the feature functionality than just listening to the radio and then looking right. at the what I can download. Right. 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 I, I, I want what what am I getting above and beyond what the other services are giving? I'll tell you, the first thing you're getting is Siri. That's the first thing is being able to say, "Hey, play this thing," and then mm-hmm. what happens after that is going to be very important to me. It, do, it, am I going to do that in a, in a car on on a trip home, and regret it, and be filling with it at the next stoplight? So, uh, check out. I mean, I'm interested to hear your 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 experience with that. I am a music I am a music service nomad at this point. Um, <laughs> hey. Uh, please check us out. We're usually live Tuesdays, 6.30 p.m. Eastern on live.awesomecast.net. Check us out on social media, Awesomecast on the, uh, the Twitters, voice, Facebooks, and Google+. Plus. We have a group. Please uh, uh, converse with us over there. Uh, you can also drop us a line at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. Subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher audio and video formats. And um, thank you, everybody. Thank you to our awesome chat room popping and... and, and not listening to wrestling right now, for instance, and uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.